Hello and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. This week, Apple of all companies reveals a patent showing off some super advanced VR tech that could change a lot of the hardware landscape, and the Quest is receiving two pretty large updates very soon, with some really ambitious wordage from Facebook regarding it. All that and more, let's get right into the news. So it actually wasn't until VR that I really ever spent time in Five Nights at Freddy's. I had played a decent amount way back when the first Freddy craze happened, around 2015, but I haven't really touched it since. That is, until VR. Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, the VR collection of the series, has actually turned out to be a pretty well-polished and enjoyable experience, and it definitely got me back into the game. Over the past year, I've seen many, many comments, however, from Quest users asking for any information on when FNAF VR is coming to their platform, as the game was announced last year at Oculus Connect, and it's been pretty much silent since then. Well, developer Steel Wool has announced that the game is still on track and set to release, quote, in the next couple of months. Also, Help Wanted is getting a Nintendo Switch and Xbox One port as well, excluding the VR support, of course, as Help Wanted can also be played on flat screens. I'm pretty pumped as the concepts of FNAF are pretty easy to grasp for new users, it translates to VR very well, and it's a fun reaction game for a group of people. But getting a bunch of folks to come over and get into VR for Freddy's isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. It'll be nice just to grab the quest and bring it anywhere and have a solid Freddy's experience to show people on the go. Supposedly within two months, you'll be able to do just that. With all the cancellations of events from GDC to E3 and Facebook's F8, I've been pretty curious to see how companies will adapt and release the information that they were expected to at the events. Facebook has announced that they'll be hosting their own Game Developers Showcase starting this Monday and running until the 19th. In the showcase, Case, new trailers and information will be released regarding some of Oculus's most anticipated games, which may mean some updates or footage related to Respawn's new Medal of Honor game, or if we're lucky, maybe a tidbit of news regarding Ubisoft's upcoming VR game, which has been rumored to be an Oculus exclusive. We don't know what we're going to actually get out of this online showcase yet, but it would be worth keeping your eyes peeled on new trailers and videos on the official Oculus YouTube channel. It has been confirmed from Oculus that we will be receiving news regarding Pistol Whip and Beat Saber updates, as well as Phantom Ops and Lies Beneath, the sweet comic-based game that I talked about a few weeks ago. But there is some more massive news for the quest unrelated to just upcoming games. Actually, two pretty big things. Not included, but last week I talked about the experimental update that Facebook engineers have been hard at work on that manages to squeeze out a ton more GPU power out of the quest, and it's admittedly aging Snapdragon 835. Very basically, it does this through machine learning systems that upscale a lower resolution image in real time. All cool stuff, but we may not ever receive that update or see the those changes for a while now, maybe in the Quest 2. These next two updates, however, are happening pretty much right now. First on the list is a totally revamped Oculus Quest user interface. Besides features like brightness and battery levels and volume being much easier to access now, there's also full multitasking support. This means that you could have the store open right next to a couple browser windows. The old Quest interface definitely wasn't terrible, but I'm open to improvements and quality of life updates like this that ultimately just make the Quest a more powerful platform in the long run. What interested me more here was Facebook being extremely blunt in their goals for updates like this, expanding the Quest ability, stating that changes like these are, quote, a step toward VR becoming the next computing platform, end quote. Basically, Facebook sees VR as a viable option for not only games and media experiences, but to completely replace the PC at one point, or at least be the most useful peripheral attached to it. This is honestly a pretty decent time to really push that agenda too, since working from home has had a gigantic surge the past few weeks due to quarantines or businesses in general not willing to take the risk by having everyone meet up in a stuffy office for work every day. Some experts even say that the workforce may transition to being far more from home in the future, even after the outbreak slows down, which, like I said, is a perfect time for VR to make its mark in that segment. The next update is potentially even more important to Quest users moving forward. Months and months ago, I made a video on OpenXR and why it's a gigantic deal for us, the consumers, developers, platform holders, really everyone. Basically, it's a royalty-free, open-source standard for VR games and applications that allows any app to run on any headset on any hardware, as long as it's supported, of course.
course. But that's where this gets big. Of course, nearly all PC VR hardware is included within OpenXR's reach, but the Snapdragon 835 and Quest are, in fact, getting a prototype release. In case I lost you, this pretty much means that any PC VR game, if built using the OpenXR API, has the ability of running on the Quest and its Android-centric software, without any major changes to the game's primary code. This makes multi-platform development far easier and essentially means that as long as you can get the game to perform well on the Quest, ports of games coming to the platform would be significantly easier. All in all, it's just good news for everyone involved, and I'm hoping that these prototype builds go well and are implemented quickly. The more games that we can get supported with OpenXR, the better. In the future, Oculus exclusives that require the usage of third-party software like Revive to get working could be a thing of the past, and the Oculus Store would just be another place to play certain games like we currently have with, dare I say it, Origin and the Epic Store. Look, exclusives all suck, and I pretty much have never completed many great Oculus VR games because it's a pain in the ass to get everything to work with each other and to run third-party software. But if OpenXR is properly used, then the situation will be better than what we have now, at least. So I'm all for it. But now it's time for a meme break! I don't know why, but this made me laugh even just a little bit. Even when I'm writing these videos, I take the time to capitalize V and R. I don't know why, it just doesn't look right. It kind of reminds me of the whole eSports, not eSports or eSports. <laughs> So I've been a huge proponent of the idea that for just PC VR, the Rift S is a better platform than the Quest for many reasons. But with how much attention the Quest has gotten recently, it's kind of got me feeling like this. I'm not going to lie. And now back to the news. Apple is actually making some pretty big waves with recent VR related patents. I just reread Ready Player One and numerous times it's mentioned that there are HMDs and devices that automatically fit themselves to your body or face where they're supposed to be, eliminating any chance of user error that would make something like motion sickness worse. I mean, this is one of the hardest parts of showing someone VR for the first time. You have to constantly be asking, things are clear, right? You're comfortable, it's not too heavy, and people just don't know how these things are supposed to feel if they've never been in VR before. And that's where this patent comes in. Imagine a headset that automatically adjusts itself to your head, face and eyes all automatically, so there's zero chance for user error, no matter how experienced you are. The patent details a device that measures your IPD or inner pupillary distance the distance between your eyes, and self-adjust for the optimal lens viewing angle. Also mentioned in the report is a sensor near the nose that can detect the best position for the headset, limiting light leak and preventing the headset from adjusting too tight or too loose. This is some serious next-gen VR headset tech that, while pretty unnecessary for VR veterans that have been putting on headsets for years, it's just another thing that leads me to believe that no matter how successful Apple's venture into AR and VR will be when these devices launch, we will at the very least get a cool headset with interesting tech. Best case scenario, Apple releases a sweet headset that people want and enjoy because it's, well, an Apple product, and it's likely going to be very user-friendly, so people are going to be more comfortable with VR. Apple pushing this hard for AR and VR really brings me back to what Facebook said earlier regarding VR becoming the next computing platform. This is probably more of how I see Apple marketing a headset, entertainment, and productivity. We don't really have much more in terms of solid concrete information on Apple's XR adventures, but if anything does pop up, I'll definitely be talking about it here. So I saw this question pop up from Upload VR, and I figured it was an interesting topic. Will COVID-19 kill VR arcades? So let's be real here. Not all VR arcades are doing all that great as is. There are some locations that do extremely well and bring in a ton of business, but there are also a lot of struggling VR arcades out there. This outbreak has not made it easier for either. Not only are public places in general receiving a lot less foot traffic, than normal, some places are even closing down entirely. But due to the nature of a VR arcade, I can understand why someone may not want to go to one of these locations. You're in a room full of people and putting on equipment that the last person just sweated all over. In times of pandemic, I could see not wanting to swap sweat with some random person if you don't have to. So in an already kind of struggling industry that may take a few months to rebound, will VR arcades be okay? Or is this maybe just a temporary pause for what VR arcades have to offer? You can't operate 
operate a business if you get no business. And right now, they kind of aren't getting any business. What do you think? I think at the very least, this may hurt some smaller arcades badly, but when it's all said and done, they will rebound or sprout back up just like they did in the first place. On the super wholesome side of the same story, Vertigo Arcades, a part of Vertigo Games, the developer for After the Fall, and Arizona Sunshine is sending out emergency resources and packages to said struggling arcades. These developers and VR arcades obviously work very closely together, and the health of one directly impacts the other in every way. So them helping each other out just makes sense. These packages range from extending or postponing payments on licensing for various games, or changing contracts entirely to better fit the amount of business that's flowing in. All in all, it's just great to see companies work together to ensure the health of the business in a time of hardship like we see now. Also, just had to throw this in as a reminder in case you forgot or have been living under a virtual rock, but Half-Life Alex drops in just six days. Sets release March 23rd. The game will launch for 60 bucks unless you bought an index or a set of knuckles. In that case, you'll just get the game for free. Now it's time for question of the week from Justin and Janina. What do I do with my life? Background, I'm 24 and currently aimless in life. Well, I can't tell you what you should do or what you want to do, but I will say that you're still really young just as I am and you still have a full life ahead of you. The best advice that I could give is to just try out a bunch of stuff. Get into whatever hobbies or passions interest you and hit them hard. You can fail at something over and over again, but if you don't try, you'll never know what could have been just that single successful attempt. Look, I'm not super great with advice like this as I find myself asking the same question all the time, but I found that having a fuck it attitude generally helps. Make sure to leave your own question of the week below. I may just answer yours next. And that's the week's news. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank every one of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Very Evil Shadow, Zimf, and Exit. I literally couldn't be doing any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.